What's up guys, Christopher from Crisis Point and welcome back to the channel. And today we'll be taking a look at the Rulemi 9 Pro Plus. This is actually going to be the second episode for my five phase video review for the Realme 9 Pro Plus. And we're basically going to be talking about my after 30 day experience of using the Realme 9 Pro Plus as my daily driver, my go to, the works. Now this is not going to be like in depth where I'm going to be doing like benchmarks and all that stuff. This is primarily going to be focused more on the day to day experience of using the Realme 9 Pro Plus as my daily driver for the past 30 days. So with that said, let's do this. All right, so this is the Realme 9 Pro Plus. Now the first on the agenda for this after 30 day review video is gonna be focused on the feel in the hand. Now the reason why I say this is relatively important is because in 2022, we're pretty much seeing a wide range of smartphones as small as 4.7 inches to as much as 7 inches. And most often than not, the sweet spot for most Android devices is going to be around the 6.7 inch screen size. My personal sweet spot is going to be ranging from 6.1 to 6.5. And luckily, because the Realme 9 Pro Plus sits at a very comfortable 6.4 inches, to me personally, it just feels great, especially when being used one-handed. Now, unlike other smartphones that go beyond the norm, in my personal perspective, the form factor of the Realme 9 Pro Plus is very comfortable. And because the screen is quite narrow as opposed to wide, it is just such a joy to hold for an extended period of time, regardless if you're just browsing social media, playing games, watching content, it is just a very comfortable experience. Not to mention the weight of it, considering its size, it is probably one of the most lightest devices that I've used in 2022. Now, of course, we cannot disregard the design because obviously, that is probably one of the highlights of the Realme 9 Pro Plus to having that psychedelic glittery design choice, which in this case is the Sunrise Blue variant. Now, personally, when I first reviewed the Realme 9 Pro Plus first quarter of this year, I said specifically that between this and the Aurora Green, my money would be on the Aurora Green variant. But after having to use this for an extended period of time, I've actually grown to love this color variant. My only concern is how much this attracts fingerprints, but of course you do have to option in putting on a case. Yes, the case may potentially hide all that beauty, but at least it is protected. And even with that case, the Realme 9 Pro Plus doesn't feel thick as opposed to other smartphones in the market that the minute you slap on a case, it becomes so bulky and quite the challenge to wield one-handed. So now let's talk about the screen to performance experience. <laughs> Now it's not exactly what I would consider a category, it's more like a combined experience. First and foremost, the screen. As I mentioned, it has a 6.4 inch screen. It's an AMOLED display with support for 90Hz refresh rate and a 360Hz touch sampling rate. In English, you have a very beautiful and responsive screen. I'm able to enjoy content, binge watch on Netflix, watch random videos on YouTube, play games, it works. Performance wise, I wouldn't say that you will be able to get a flagship experience when playing games. To me, the Tech Diamond City 920 is a very capable chip, but it's not going to be at par with the likes of, let's say, the Realme GT Neo 3 that uses a Diamond City 8100. So as a daily driver, day-to-day -day tasks, basically anything that you normally do on a regular day, the Realme 9 Pro Plus will be able to handle and give you a very smooth experience. Now, of course, as a daily driver, then obviously you'll be using your device extensively. Luckily, unlike other smartphones in this price point, the Realme 9 Pro Plus supports 60 watt dart charge. Basically means you can easily top off your battery from zero to 100% in less than an hour. I mean, think about it, as an incentive, the charger comes in a box. So you're not really missing out on anything. Rival smartphones don't even have a charger in the box. And even if let's say there are rival smartphones in the market that doubles the charging speed, 60 watts is still 60 watts. And that's still a far cry from being slow in contrast to the majority of other brands in the market. For the past 30 days of using the Realme 9 Pro Plus extensively, at this point in time, and I'm still using it to this day, I can say that this is a really good value for money smartphone. In a few words, it's basically a really, really good all-rounder smartphone. It may not have bleeding edge technology like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1s of the world, but it still delivers where it's needed the most. 
in any case that's pretty much it for my after 30 day review video i hope you enjoyed it stay tuned for episode three four and five where i'm going to be going in depth with the camera gaming and basically my long-term review video which is going to be after 60 days of using the Rumi 9 pro plus extensively i'm pretty sure i'll be able to answer your questions if this is a worthy buy considering that the holidays is just right around the corner so if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out on future uploads regarding the realme 9 pro plus thanks again for watching this is chris once again from crisis point and i'll catch you in the next